Now let's start with the nation. ASU begins mobilization for another strike in varsities. Victor here, Ashiwaju, well, I meant will arise back from a trip abroad. I will never betray your trust if re-elected, says Governor Oyetola. On this defection to Abgas on Settles PDP, <clears throat> MTN's new shareholders get 5.7 billion naira dividends. No territory under terror group, FG insists. General Minima's uh, passport seized over probe into 3.8 billion naira fraud. And uh, Atiku abandoned Benue in trying time, says Otom. <clears throat> All right, lots of stories. Which story are we starting with? I start uh, with the federal government uh, barring the chief of army staff, uh, Lieutenant General Kenneth Minima, from leaving the country in view of his uh, alleged complicity in the 13.8 billion defense equipment procurement uh, fraud. So uh, the, according to the Nigerian Immigration Service, they said uh, they were responding to his suit. So he filed a suit against them before the federal high court in Abuja saying that they have prevented him from traveling abroad, and they also confiscated um, his uh, passports. He also accused them of threatening, intimidating, and unlawfully harassing him while he attempted to travel abroad. So in their response, they said that uh, they had given his, the EF EFCC had given his name under their watch list from time to time because of the investigations that has been going on. And there was a time they removed the name from the list. At the time, I think he was allowed to travel, but now they put his name back on that list. And so, because they need to follow the laws, it's quite constitutional for anyone whose name is on the list not to be allowed to travel, they have decided to seize this passport. So it's been back and forth. I hope that uh, he calms down and allow this investigation clear his name first before he attempts right. to travel. Yeah. Yes. yes, so um, the Financial <laughs> Times, there was an article in it written by David Pilling. Hmm. And uh, it says the title of the, <laughs> of the article was, the, it says, What is Nigeria's Government for? by David Pilling, Financial Times, at 1st January 2022. And it basically just criticized the government and said that the government was sleepwalking. You know, it's... Um, its way to, it says that, um, well, he highlighted the rising banditry in Nigeria. He said that um, the, president, the president and the current administration has, for, uh, has um, been in charge of like two, has been uh, the president over two economic slums that the country has gone through. The banditry and kidnapping and insecurity in Nigeria that Nigeria is facing is a sad situation because being a, um, a former military head of state, this was something that they thought he would come and he would be able to handle. You know, they just mentioned so many things, yeah. really criticizing the government and showed as if the government was doing nothing, um, arms folded, while Nigeria was just, you know, I, going I, into, the, you know, uh, falling apart. Right. Mm. But the presidency has responded and said that... Um, this particular person does not even live in Nigeria, yeah. comes once in a while, jets in and jets out for a few yeah. so he doesn't months. Know the so he doesn't story. really understand yeah. what's happening. Concerning the insecurity that he highlighted, this present administration has, um, has some gains that he refused right. to put down. Right. And that um, some of these things that people, you know, just to, the you know, president was just trying <laughs> to say that, you know, we have our gains, yeah. there are things that we have right. done that are right, and that I some have... of the people who criticize us do not even live here, do not know yeah. what we're going through. Exactly. Just I agree with that us. review because I had an opportunity to meet him, with David Pillen, and um, he and the reports he wrote concerning something I was working was very clear that he was in a vendetta mm. agenda to just discredit the government in the entirety. That's my own personal oh, view. Oh, really? Mm. I, have, I met him and he was totally, totally off based mm. on the conversation we had with him. But um, that's, I was going to take the major headline, ASU, mm. because ASU is saying they're, they're going to have another meeting in February 14th to discuss with their partners to see what the industrial action um, next steps would be. According to them, they've agreed uh, last year in May where they agreed with the federal government party who they agreed to a certain figure uh, for the uh, for salary. I recall there were five points they wanted um, the uh, change the change they negotiated to be on, negotiation to be on, three of which is a revitalization, that's the funding revitalization, mm, the, um, the autonomy of the schools and their welfare. That, mm. So they're saying that they asked the party last year that, are you authorized, has your principal authorized you to make these negotiations? And they kept saying, yes, they're authorized, but they still need to go back to review. And their worry is that every single time they need to strike to get a meeting. You strike to get implementation, strike to get a response, strike to get strike attention. So every single thing, you need a strike. So right now we've agreed 
but there's no implementation. Nothing has been done. Mm -hmm. So after the agreement, everybody went back and has been silent. And so now they are waiting wow. for that's strike. So they will not So they're about to plan on that strike. And they say that oh. you don't have to keep going through this. way. If you make an agreement, stand well, by the so agreement it. and then implement it. It's really sad, but on a political diversion, um, a bit of shaking in the PDP of Ekiti State as the ex-governor Shegoni has moved from, he has, he has resigned from being a PDP member uh, because he couldn't get the governorship ticket because his plan was to get the governorship ticket. The governorship <coughs> ticket has gone to someone else. Um, according to the paper, they said he's, um, this person is uh, Ayofayo Shea's anointed candidate, who is Otuba Bisiko Laboli. So he's left. He, ha he didn't say which party he's going to, mm. but people are saying he might be going to APGA. The spokesperson for PDP within the Kitty State has said that they, should, they have no reason to worry that there'll be mass defection. PDP still is on ground. Right. And that APC, within all of this discussion, mm. Shah, let the people of Ekiti open their eyes, right. get their voters' card, and make an informed decision for who they want to lead them. All right, the punch. NIMC portal breaks down banks, telcos, passport issuers suffer. Um, housewife 30 years old stabs 18-year-old husband's nephew to death over broken mirror in Ogun State. Dismissed DPO fleeing kingpin arrested NDLA seizes 22,160 kg codeine in Lagos Airport. Um... <clears throat> All platform explosions, seven missing, one dies, three alive, says firm. And the federal government school feeding suffers set back people's <clears throat> wait in vain for vendors. Okay? Yes, so Story. I think the federal school <clears throat> feeding um, program is collapsing. Um, this report had gone to, they went to various schools in different states. Benue, Cross River, Akwaibom, Ogun, Enugu, Bauchi, and Keno State. Just, you know, randomly asking schools, students, um, some proprietors and some food vendors what the state of the feeding program was so far. And the story is sad, you know, all round. In Benue State, um, in one of the schools, they said that they were only fed three times in 2021 and they did not wow. see the vendors, the school feeding program just scared. stopped. Mm. And in 2022, they haven't seen anyone mm. yet. Um, in places mm. like Cross River, they said that the budget was further slashed into two. Some of the vendors... Okay, some schools say, like in Kano, they said, yes, the school feeding program is, continues, but most times they don't bring enough food for the students. So some students will get, others won't get. Huh. And when you ask the vendors, they'll be like, well, it's what they will provide. Uh, we can only provide um, based on the amount that we were given. Mm. Some vendors say they haven't been paid for months. Some schools say that is impossible because um, they are sure that vendors are paid monthly, but some vendors are saying they haven't been paid in months. Some of them said they were paid over, a little over 100,000 for a month and that given the inflation rate, that there's no how you can feed the number of students in a school. So it just shows that, you know, someone, one of them said that there's no proper monitoring of this school feeding program and that's mm -hmm. why you have all these discrepancies yeah, up and down. Exactly. This is really sad. It is. Okay, I was going to take the major headline, NIMC, because remember, we have the, <clears throat> the national uh, identity um, number was supposed to help synchronize um, getting your SIM and all the, um, the organizations like banks and telcos all use this NIN number. So unfortunately, the portal went down for the past five days. Wow. And many of these, many, uh, many, of, many people couldn't get SIM cards or, work with, um, or get their identification verified. So they couldn't get their SIMs. And um, this happened, and, and, and before this time, before, uh, before NIMC made it compulsory, is you can just register a customer, which will verify the NIN just, just normally. But mm. now you have to go through the portal. Yes. And the portal came down and down. It has caused them many people to be stranded. But yet to get a report exactly of how far, uh, how if long it will take. It, yeah. All the major telcos are complaining really bitterly that mm. for the past five days they've not been able to get any verification. So my worry is when things fall, fall apart like this, like the case of the food and the case of the NIMs, who's, who's responsible? Who's going to get... To check. Who, who's going to check? Who's doing the check and, and balance? And who's going to get punished when things that should run don't run, run properly? But you know if it's data, it has to do with technology. Are you going to punish technology? No, there's no, no people in charge. in charge of it. Yeah, yeah. But even the technology can fail the people in charge of it. So not yeah. doing their job. the management of a Shiba Exploration and Production Company Limited has stated that three of his crew members who got missing after an explosion rocked the FPSO Trinity Spirit at the Ubokiti Terminal Delta State mm. in the early hours of Wednesday uh, have been found alive. Uh, they said one, they found one person dead in the premises and seven are still missing. So they are still, I think we took that story last week when that explosion happened. 
and uh, they are still the three people that they found alive they've taken to the hospitals they are making sure that they are properly treated and taken care of and they are still launching a search for the remaining seven missing people okay let's go on a quick break when we come back we we'll continue with the review stay with us we'll be right back stay tuned your view will be right back Staying with us, so you're going to take the other yeah. manager story. Yeah, talking. I, I saw this headline. Saying White American prostitute jailed 12 months for 57.8 million naira fraud in Quara. On reading the story, I found out that it wasn't a white American that was jailed, rather, a 20 year old man, Fawaz Oyewoli, was jailed. The EFCC found out that he was impersonating like oh, he a, was white a white American professional prostitute that he oh. was he impersonated that he was practicing in the US and the sum of money that um, passed through his account was 57.8 billion that was illegally um, um, obtained. And, and so the EFCC pro prosecuted the case. He was found guilty. They found proof through his iPhone, his laptop. All of that has been confiscated. And now he's been sentenced to 12 months in jail for okay. fraud. Let me just take one more um, human interest story in the punch. A 30-year-old housewife, Cynthia Olukio Wu, in Ogun State has been arrested for allegedly stabbing her 18-year-old nephew. Actually, her nephew-in-law, his her husband's nephew. Mm -hmm. They said that this boy had um, mistakenly broken a mirror that was being used in the house. And she got upset for whatever reason and took a knife and stabbed him in the neck. Mm -hmm. um, the police received a call and came to the scene of the incident where, unfortunately, the boy had died. Mm -hmm. She was arrested. Mirror. Like, what could have happened? Mm. A mirror? There's more, there's more to it. I mean, he, she, it has to be something yeah, that yeah, is wrong with her. Let's move on quickly to Vanguard. <laughs> Presidency, PDP, APC, playing games with zoning, says source. Or Tom to article, Bainway people not happy with you. We never agreed on usage of hijab in our school, says Kwara Khan. Presidency rejects Financial Times support on Buhari's performance. Electricity, Nigeria's generation drops... 13.8 percent to 3,800 megawatts. F um, 5G MTN pays license fee before deadline. Um, female genital mutilation Nigeria ranks third highest globally, says UNICEF. 40 suspected Yahoo boys in white garments invade Abuja estate at 2:30 a.m. And Oshun 2022 Arabia Shola's loyalists vow to work against Oyitola. Okay, so story. We what? have a power mm -hmm. crisis, obviously. And it's so sad when we keep reading these things over and over again. One week, we, the power goes up. Another week, it drops. So this is um, a power drop to 3,835 megawatts. This is due to the fact that the Igni power station, which is our highest um, power station, caught fire. A part of it caught fire. And so it was shut down. It dropped the power supply. Many other power station it showed in, increase in their power um, generation but Igni that usually should give us 1,300 1, megawatts was shut down. Now, the president... Is it Igni? Is it Igni? Igni or like Igni? Like an English name. Mm. Okay, Igni, Igni. Um, the president of Nigeria, president of, uh, president of Nigeria Consumer Protection Network, Kule Kola Olubui, says that every time a power project shuts down, it impacts the cost of doing business because mm. many businesses within the area would have to find other ways of supply and it would reduce bringing, people bringing their own business to any community when they know that power isn't consistent within that community. I think this is a major right. issue. 40 suspected Yahoo boys attempted to breach the estate security of MAB Global Estate in Abuja in the early hours of Saturday. Mm. Uh, they were denied entry. So what happened was about 30 of them, mm. they were all dressed in white garments. Uh, they attempted to gain entrance into this uh, estate at 11.45, but they were prevented by the security men because they were asking them questions. Where are you going to? Where's the number of the person you're going to visit? They couldn't really provide an answer, and so they didn't let them in. So they went away and came back with additional uh, people all wearing white garments, and they were forcing their way through the gates that they wanted to enter. Finally, the estate's uh, gate manager had to deploy about 50 men to come and help him drive those people. So the place they called that they wanted to go was a residence of um, the Embassy of Democratic Arab Republic located within the estate. That was the location that they gave, that they had a party there. But the security people were saying that this is not a residential, it's hmm. an office, so to speak, so you I'm can't sure have a party in this place. They tried to reach the FCT police command. No 
response. response till today. How did they confirm that they were Yahoo boys? Uh, they said they were dressed in exactly. that suspected Yahoo boys dressed and they had these leather bags that could have been arms right. inside. Let me take UNICEF. Yeah. UNICEF is giving us some really important data saying that um, estimated 19.9 million survivors for female <coughs> genital mutilation in Nigeria it makes Nigeria rank the third um, highest number of women with the, how, and, and girls who have undergone the FGM um, globally. And this data is quite um, very, very painful to see. It says that we actually increased from 16.9% in mm -hmm. 2013 to 90.2% in 2018. Uh, part of the statement also said that FGM remains widespread in Nigeria with an estimate of 90.9. And uh, more data let me give to you is that... Um, 25% in 2020, okay, I think I said that already. There's another, there's another one that got to me. Yes, this one. It says that 86% of females were cut before the age of 5, while 8% were cut between the ages of 5 and 14. And this is um, really, really an important data that a lot of young girls are being cut before they even reach puberty. Oh, gosh. And this is some data that Nigeria must focus on because... Nigeria being the third highest. The third yeah. so, the so we have survived. So what they've counted those who have survived, survived to show yeah. that we actually undergone mm -hmm. it. So uh, that the girl, the girls, really, 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 really famous. That was so Any other story in Vanga? Let's move yes, on. Yes, I want to quickly take the story of Atiku and the governor. The and the political story. Yes, so. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when this is, you know, I have to do my job and inform my people. So the governor was speaking, had the vice president visit, and when the vice president visited. He mentioned to the vice president, you know, like this is face to face conversation. You did not support our people. When the crisis happened, this is the governor of Benue State, um, Governor Samuel Otom, said that when the issues happened with the thief people, who gave the vice, former vice president the highest title ever in that community? They gave the chief secretary title to the former Z uh, Zege Mu. Hey, of thief. That's the highest thief title to the vice president. They felt that he's supposed to protect them when issues happen. And that when they were attacked, mm. that the vice president did not say anything or provide any form of security for the people of Tiv, and that they are unhappy with the vice president. And that the, he mentioned, which I wanted to highlight, that the anti the Benue um, anti grazing law has nothing to do with um, any ethnicity. It's not against the Fulani people or any other ethnic group. You just right. want able to understand the challenge okay. that many people are facing. They are able to go to their farms right. and they need to protect them from <clears throat> to able to continue doing their business. Let me quickly take the point. Outgoing governors in do or die battles for secession. Um, <coughs> mother daughter in trouble for spending 0.9 million mistakenly credited to their account. Sanusi <laughs> pays birthday visit to show me the point director in Abel Okuta. And 2023, PDP in hide and seek zone again. So you took that story? Yes, I took the story of the old woman, yes, oh. Sarah Ojo and her 24-year-old daughter, oh, Oluwa Bukumi Dokas, landed in trouble for allegedly spending 929,000 uh, naira that was mistakenly credited to the account by one Linda Faith Ekele, who said she mistakenly mistakenly transferred the money into the account. Mm -hmm. So efforts to retrieve the money proved abortive. They tried to reach uh, the woman, the uh, a bank accounts. They tried to reach the woman. They were not responding to the police. So till they picked them up and they filed the case in court. Uh, she explained that when she got the money, she sent 100,000 naira to her mother. Oh. And then she didn't tell miracle us how yet. You know, that sort of miracle. So they are, mm. they are in court already. And... Um, I hope they just find a way to make them pay the money, even if it's instrumentally. Yeah. All right, Nigerian oh, Tribune. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lassa fever, 40 died, four health workers infected in January. 2023 presidency plot against article thickens. Trust mm -hmm. fund three years after approval AFG fails to release the, 50, the 53 billion naira for, I think it's 5 billion actually, for vehicle financing scheme, because I read that story. Uh, vehicle importers lament payment of storage charges over the V-reg collapse. And the LSC's 22,160 kg codeine meth loud at the Lagos Seaport machine. I use wise men yet to meet over our shoe PDP crisis and drop students' loan bill, as it tells reps. Okay, Mariam, which story? NDLA, of course. So um, <laughs> NDLA has been very busy. They say over 22,000 kilograms of codeine syrup, methamphetamine, and skunk have been seized at the Apapa Seaport. <laughs> and then also... Um, they, had a, they did a drug, uh, a raid on a drug den in the Mushin area where they found so many um, of these um, 
illegal drugs, cannabis, Laos, skunks, coochies, the names, uh, methamphetamine, as well as 17 suspects that were arrested. Amongst these 17, five of them were women. And then meanwhile, a female drug kingpin, Jamila Seriki, hmm. um, was um, also arrested. Guess where? Eco Atlantic Beach, Victoria Island. And she was the owner of 12,385 pellets of loud imported from Ghana. So okay. obviously, there are stories of a 64 year old DPO of Idonre Police Station who was dismissed from service for drug offenses, Monday Chica, and now rearrested with his accomplice, Emmanuel Eniola, with 280 blocks of compressed cannabis. Wow. So this is just everybody. Yeah. Everybody yeah. doing anything. Just Please, let me wow. take the story of the Vanga, um, from, I mean, the schoolboy. So 121 Bethel Baptist High School students were kidnapped <coughs> July um, 2021. Many of them, the ransom was paid, they were released, but one child, one of the um, students refused to come back. And even though the... Um, Khan representative that took the ransom to bail out the boy got to the place. They was, kidnapped the boy, yeah. and the boy. They said the boy said he's enjoying his life there. There, hmm. that the kidnappers when they go out give him, they shower him with gifts, yeah, make him very him. comfortable that he doesn't want to come back. Yeah. I know that there's this Stockholm syndrome stuff that they say might happen, and I think that it's important that the interest of the child, even is a is a minor, so it's not what he wants. But the interest of the government supersedes that if the ransom has been paid, the kidnapper should be compelled to release. How do you compel? Whether he how do you wants to, how do you yeah. compel a criminal? Whether how he do you wants compel? to wrap up this story. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, um, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control registered 40 Lassa fever-related deaths in January, Ew. adding that four health workers were also infected uh, following the latest outbreak. So they've just um, given us data on everything that's happening. Said 40 deaths. 981 cases reported in January were across 43 local government areas uh, among 14 states. And they said that cumulatively from week one to week two in 2022, we've had 49 deaths so far, hmm. which is about 19.0%. And they mentioned most of the states, almost like every state here, Doon, Dobao, Chibenwe, Oyo, Taraba, Iboni, Kogi, Kaduna, Katsina, Iboni, Plateau. And all those things. So they are saying that they are currently distributing medical response uh, commodities to states and treatment centers. We just need to be very careful. Oh, okay, we have to wrap up. There are two stories that really come attention, but unfortunately, we ran out of time. Very important stories, but I guess we have another opportunity some other time. Let's go on the break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.